Everyone ready? Good afternoon. I am County Judge Mark Henry. I am joined this afternoon by Dr. Philip Kaiser, Galveston County's local health authority and an infectious disease doctor, and Dr. Patel, Director of Infectious Disease at University of Texas Medical Branch, one of our partners in this endeavor. Last Thursday afternoon, we were notified by the state of Texas that we needed to prepare to have mass vaccination sites. Uh, Thursday afternoon, as soon as the phone call was over, we put the plans into motion uh, for something we've never done before, never actually even talked about it before, uh, designating Walter Hall eventually as the site that we would set up first in conjunction with a UTMB site on the island that I think uh, the Dr. Patel can talk about a little bit in a minute. We uh, reviewed about six different locations. They all had strengths and weaknesses. This one had the best overall strength because it's a county-owned facility. We can control it 100% start to finish. We can close it down. We don't have to ask anyone's permission. We are going to be prepared to administer as many as 5,000 doses in a day. We have set that up. Uh, the tents and things will start being delivered tomorrow. It's very important for everyone to understand we are the last mile to use an e-commerce term. We don't get to dictate the upstream supply. We only receive what we receive and provide the logistics and the support to provide the site. We are going to, we think, be doing 1,000 a day, hopefully starting next week, on our way to 5,000 a day as the vaccination effort continues. Something I like to use as an analogy, I want you to think of a bell curve. The first part of that bell curve occurred in hospitals and doctor's offices. The last part of that bell curve will end up in doctor's offices and hospitals. We're gonna be the center part that's the big part. So that's really what we're here for. It's going to be a mass effort uh, for located in Galveston County. We, uh, we do not restrict residents to Galveston County as the state has told us we can't do that and we understand that. So uh, at this point, I'm gonna pass it off to Dr. Kaiser. We will all take questions at the end if you can just hold your questions till the end. So Dr. Philip Kaiser, local health authority, infectious disease doctor. Thank you very much, uh, Judge Henry. So we're very pleased to be able to announce that we're going to be start doing mass vaccinations. There's obviously been a lot of consternation over the uh, past uh, month or so about people wanting to get the vaccine. And we're trying to do everything we can to make sure that we can get everybody who is needs the vaccine or who wants the vaccine that they can get it right now we're on operating under rules that the state of texas has what they call phase 1a and phase 1b basically what it means is frontline healthcare workers and people that are at high risk for having a bad outcome should they uh, contract COVID, and that basically means people over 65 and people with underlying health conditions we are currently working on a system to get people registered where they can register primarily via the internet, but also have a phone uh, system where people can call if they don't have access to the internet. We don't have all those details worked out yet. Our current target is that we should be able to start administering vaccine on Saturday. Keep in mind, however, that we get vaccine from the state. And so for the next several weeks, probably the total amount of vaccine in the county will probably be about 5,000 doses total. Um, but we're working with our collaborators at UTMB to make sure that vaccine can reach this part of the county. When we look at the rates of infection in Galveston County, believe it or not, Leak City is one of the hardest hit. That's where we're seeing the highest rates. So this is a very good place to have a, uh, a vaccine hub. Ultimately, as the judge has mentioned, what we would like to do is being able to have things running every day until we can get as many people as who want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. But we're going to have to wait on both the state and the federal government uh, to give us more supply. We're very grateful for the collaboration, not just with the, uh, uh, the Galveston County Health District, but also with UTMB, who have really been great partners throughout this whole pandemic. And they're working extremely hard to make sure that vaccine gets distributed and that we work together. So what you're going to be seeing really is a countywide effort that's led through the uh, county judge's office and then also with participating with the Galveston County Health District and UTMB. And so with that, I'll turn things over to Dr. Patel and he can tell you more about uh, those efforts. Sure, good afternoon. Uh, on behalf of UTMB, I want to say that UTMB is very proud to partner with the Galveston County as well as Galveston County Health Department to make this vaccination effort a reality. Um, UTMB is obviously delighted to be designated a hub. It wasn't easy. It took a lot of uh, hue and cry from our community leaders 
uh, and eventually our voices were heard and we are designated a hub. Obviously, we want to grow the vaccination activities. As Dr. Kaiser mentioned, initially the supplies will be limited, but we hope that the supplies will continue to increase. Our goal, together with our community partners, is to provide vaccines to everyone. UTMB obviously will continue to provide vaccines through its own clinics, but also provide access to vaccines through our community partners to anyone who qualifies. Thank you. Questions? Judge, please, or Dr. Kaiser, who can ever answer this, but how is the sign-up going to work? I know you said you're working on something, but what's the, is it going to be central for when there's more than just this one location, or how is that going to be set up, Dr. Kaiser? Yeah, so right now we're working. UTMB has a, has a way of signing people up, and the uh, Galveston County Health District has a way of signing people up. So if you may recall, UTMB last week, did not have vaccine, and so some people's uh, vaccinations had to be canceled. So those people are being offered uh, appointments with this current batch. And uh, at the health district, we had about um, a thousand vaccines that were delivered, uh, and um, those appointments were then offered online and by phone, and those filled up very, very rapidly. So um, right now, there is a little bit of a catch as catch can. You know, you get it when 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 you can. What we're working on, hopefully, to have us uh, in the next several weeks would be to have a, a wait list where people can sign up, and then go once they have that their name on that list, then they can be contacted and say, okay, it's time to make an appointment. But we're not quite there yet. And we also don't have a stable um, supply of vaccine yet. We know we're going to get about 5,000 this week. We know we're going to get probably about the same next week, although that allocation has not yet been made. So we just have to play this week by week. Can you talk at all about how the division is going to work if, if UTMB is continuing to receive some supply and you've been on UTMB you, patients? Sure. Is there a number that some will be built for mass vaccinations and others will be for paid for UTMB, more specific UTMB people. Is there a, how, well, how's that division working? Dr. Tell, you can speak up a little bit, sir. Sure, sure. So, uh, good question. I know it's, that's a challenge for us. Uh, we ca consider all the supplies we get as benefit for the community. We clearly have a lot of patients already pre-identified who qualify. Obviously, they live in our community. But we are going to adjust our allocations to uh, be made available to non-UTMB patients. I don't have the exact amount that we will release, but it's going to be week by week in conjunction with consultation again with the health department. Uh, so we promise to really eventually get to everyone, uh, but it, it, the uh, exact number and the amount we will uh, make available to the community will, will, will decide as time goes on. Can you explain how the logistics of how the mass vaccination site will work? Like, is, is, are people going to have to wait in line? Is they, can they get shots in their cars? Like, is it, what's the... Yeah. What's the... So, so currently what we're planning is a drive-through here, okay. and so people will enter from that end of the, of the park. They will be uh, met by, uh, they will be greeted by someone there who will verify the identity and make sure they have an appointment. So first thing, it's going to be appointment only, okay? And then that details will be verified. There'll be several stations along the way where um, where either questions can be answered or if people have some sort of medical need or there's some issue that may disqualify them uh, from getting the vaccine, they can talk to a nurse. Ultimately, they'll make their way around here right behind you. And in this parking lot over here, we plan on having three to four lanes, 10 cars perhaps at a time. And, uh, and then the vaccine team will just go down the line. Bum, 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 bum. Um, we still have, we, they're going to have to wait for 15 minutes to make sure that nothing happens. And so what we envision happening is that there'll be the first line, then the second line, then the third line. By that time, the first line can be go, the next line comes up, you know, and so that way we can keep things moving just like they do loading onto the ferry. Um, and uh, that's going to be, from the public's point of view, pretty much it. And we also plan on having uh, Internet access so all of these things can be recorded and reported back to the state. Do you know how many staff roughly this will require? Not yet. We're, we're, we're literally, right after this, we're going to have all the <laughs> work out all of those details. We're having a meeting. It's going to be a very big operation because not only do you need the medical staff to do it, you need the clerical staff, you need technical staff, we need police. You need um, runners. We're going to have an ambulance on site in case someone has a bad reaction so they can be taken care of right then and there. So that's, that's the basic plan. And 
by hopefully by the end of the week, we'll have all the details laid out for you. Hey, Judge you. Henry, I, th these will be for you. I'm okay. the pool, so yes, I've sir. got a bunch of from <laughs> Channel 11 and then one from me. All right. So uh, this is from Channel 11. How does it feel now to have hubs in Galveston County after being passed over by the state the first week? And do you expect consistent supply uh, going forward? Sir, well, first, uh, we're very relieved that Galveston County was recognized. Having a facility such as UTMB here and not being a hub made no sense at all, but that's the way it works sometimes. The supply is a completely different question, and we just beg the patience of the people. Remember how in the beginning uh, testing was difficult to get, and now at least in Galveston County, thanks to UTMB, if you call right now, you'll probably have a test today and have your results tonight or tomorrow morning. So. Okay, I've got a few more. Okay. Is, this, uh, is some of this week shipment being used to vaccinate the 6,000 UTMB patients who had their first dose? Uh, I'm saying that, that that isn't worded right. Something used to vaccinate the 6,000 UTM patients who had their first dose is canceled and rescheduled for last week. Can you update on that situation? That'd be a UTM medical, medical yeah, decision. I can try and it's worded a little no, off, so. I'll let them there and Dr. Kaiser can chip in as well. Yeah, it's true that we had to cancel a lot of appointments. We are going to bring them back in our system slowly. So we'll, we'll get to them in about two to three weeks just based on supplies coming in. But throughout, you know, as, as we move forward, our goal is to have patients vaccinated that are also non-UTMB. We are not just doing UTMB patients only as we receive the supplies. We'll, we'll try to include everyone. Okay, and the next one's from Houston Public Media. Uh, the Houston Health Department reported last week it took 16 minutes for registration to fill up over 2,000 appointments at Minute Maid last Saturday. Are you expecting the same demand for your online registration portal? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, the simple the simple answer is is that there were a thousand uh, appointments yesterday, and how long did it take, Ashley? About two hours. About two hours. So, you know. People are hungry to get this vaccine. I've got one more okay. question here. Uh, and Judge Henry, this may be for you, okay. I'm not sure. Uh, President Biden has pledged to do 100 million vaccinations in 100 days, which is 30% of the po U.S. population. Do you think it's possible to vaccinate 30% of the country in the next 100 days? Thank goodness I'm only responsible for Galveston County. <laughs> I can tell you that we will vaccinate 5,000 people a day when that supply comes. One of the reasons this park was chosen was because of its ability with all this behind me for, to hold enough cars to do 5,000 a day. Other, other locations we evaluated, we could do 1,000 a day, we would never be able to have the cars for 5,000 a day. So we don't want to go somewhere and then change where our, our location, we said we'll start here. So we'll, we'll, all the vaccine we can get, we'll put into people's arms. And Judge, could you reiterate on your first few statements when I walked up the, you know, when you Certainly. That was uh, last Thursday afternoon. We had a conference call with the state uh, dishes and TDEM saying we're changing the model of distribution and that model will now be we want you to plan on mass vaccination sites. So minutes after that phone call, I got on the phone with Dr. Kaiser, explained to him what had just been relayed to me. We started working immediately, uh, met Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and got as much put together as we could in that short time frame. Uh, we'll start seeing facilities such as tents and other things delivered to tomorrow. So we have done, uh, as, we moved as quickly as we could. That's largely because of pre-positioned contracts that exist because of hurricanes. So believe it or not, hurricanes have been a helpful hand in getting this mass distribution site set up. You mentioned communications with the state. Um, you have, uh, was it last month you held a press conference where you expressed some displeasure in the state on other issues about closure. <laughs> but do you have any sense that the lack of vaccines or changes going on in Galveston County was caused by political reasons? No, none at all. Why did that happen? You'd have to ask the state that. I, I would have no way of knowing. No, um, but you know we're, we're taking what we're given and doing what we can with it. So like I said, we're, we're the last part of this process. If the vaccine comes, we'll administer it. If it doesn't come, that's out of our hands. But no, we have no reason to believe it's political motivated at all. Dr. Kaiser, Dr. Patel, obviously we know about this site here. Are there going to be other hub sites in the county? And then also kind of a secondary since it's the emphasis is on hub sites, how about UTMB's own process for patients? And also, like smaller outlets, like Sullivan Pharmacy over in San Leon has been filling in the gap with the Moderna vaccine. Is that getting cut off, as you understand from this? Or or will those 
continue in some way. Uh, our understanding of the system is how it's going to work in the future is that the hub sites will be guaranteed a certain supply of vaccine on a regular basis. So places like some of the smaller pharmacies make allocation. Uh, but it's been made very clear to us that our ability to get more vaccine every week depends on how much we use in the week before. So, you know, that's why we're very anxious to make sure that we have a smooth running process. Um, so UTMB has been designated a hub. The Galveston County Health District has been designated a hub. We are working to integrate those processes as much as possible so that by the time we're actually up to doing 5,000 a day, we actually will have a very integrated, unified command, unified system uh, in, in getting it out. As for the other places, I can't speak to that. Because yesterday you said you were looking at Port of Galveston. Oh, yes. Okay. Galveston. Other places. Yeah, yeah. So, so we do have a sort of a rollout plan depending on supply and also the demand for it. One was uh, there was actually uh, an inspection at the Port of Galveston today. I, unfortunately, I couldn't make that one. Um, but uh, also there's uh, discussions about doing uh, something at, at Jack Brooks Park. Um, we also have discussions about sending mobile units out to some of the bigger churches in areas where there may not be good mobility. So we're really thinking of in terms of stages and, and continuing to stage it farther and farther as we get that supply. But that is going to take time. And so that's the one thing we really ask people. Remember, as the judge keeps saying, we can only give as much as we get. And so um, as we get more, we are going to work very hard to make sure it gets out as far and wide as it possibly can be. A couple of logistical questions. Oh, I'm sorry, were no, you going to say something, Dr. Patel? On the island. Ste I, can you step yeah. up, sir? Yeah. yeah, just to add on to what Dr. Kaiser said. Even among the 6,000 uh, appointments that were canceled, Vast, well, I wouldn't say vast, but a significant proportion was actually not UTMB patients. So we are going to accommodate them on the island for now, uh, as we are not planning any an external hub. The UTMB clinics will also have special slots available starting today for non-UTMB patients. So we will be serving them on the island as well. And this is going to be mainly a logistical kind of question. So if someone comes here to the hub, say, if it is open Saturday gets that first shot are they coming back to this destination that's the, the current one? that that's the current plan that we're working on right now remember not only is the is does it simplify in terms of knowing where you need to go you also have to get the same product okay so by knowing where those products are being administered and when they're administered by having people go back to the same spot we think that will facilitate that and is it guaranteed is this Pfizer Moderna or is it just whatever it's going to be it's it's, it? it's whatever we get so right now for example UTMB is getting Pfizer the health district's getting Moderna we don't know there may be two or three new vaccines come mid late February and so obviously the logistics of keeping track of that are going to be challenging Judge Fenner, you mentioned people from have a message for people from Houston that might be trying to sign up at this site? Or would you, it, you know, the state's mandate, which I agree with, is that you take all people who are Texas residents that come here for vaccine. So uh, my preference, obviously, is Galveston County, but I don't get to make that decision, and I'm okay with the state's decision. In fact, that's actually in the guidelines yes. for you to be a hub, right? So you got Correct. To anybody. Correct. And we expect to have a pretty significant showing from Southern Harris County, which is less than a mile that way. Is that so, the reason the site was chosen? Or no, the, the, site, the reason for the site being chosen is that we own it, we can cancel all the events that were planned here. We don't have to ask anyone's permission. And we've got a lot of roads here. And someone mentioned that Jack Brooks is being looked at as a secondary location, not an alternate to this one. But that's also the exact same reason. It's a county park, lots of long roads. We can pack a lot of people in there and keep them in queue while we get the process started start to finish. Do you know what kind of events are canceled over here? Uh, some county things, which obviously is okay, but a couple of weddings uh, and some other private party events like that. Uh, to those people, we offered another county facility and to waive the fee. So if they were able to relocate to a different county facility, we're not going to charge them anything. And this is a real hyper-local logistics thing. Highway 3, when there's a big event here, for example, gets backed up. Yes. It can be similar like the, the, the music fest type at, of traffic at plan. At 5,000 a day, yes, I fully expect that. TxDOT has been involved with us since Friday afternoon. TxDOT is uh, aware and supportive of what we're doing, so they're completely okay with us taking the traffic control that we need to on Highway 3. If I may add, yeah. about this Lake City location, I think is there is another advantage of being here. This is the this particular location has the highest infection rate in the county, so it's a, it's, it's good to be right in this community. Anybody else? Thanks, guys.